Hello and welcome to Cross Life with your host, Pastors Bob Cornell. And Sharon Cornell. And we are so glad that you're watching today. Uh, we believe that today's program, God is going to speak to your heart. And he has a word especially for you in the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've just, we believe that with all of our heart. And we're so glad that you're watching today. Yes. Uh, we would encourage you to contact us to let us know that you're watching that on this station that you're watching us from, you can see our contact information on the screen below. We would love to hear from you today. Yes. And we are pastors of Covenant Church right. in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And uh, you can also see our, our website uh, information below and uh, you can contact us that way. Uh, Facebook, on YouTube, Corner Ministries, you can check us out that way as well. But we here on this program, we want to minister to you and we believe that God has laid upon our hearts something that is uh, especially designed for you. On today's program, we're going to be dealing with I, I, something very simple, mm -hmm. but yet it's so, so very important. Yeah. And it's just simply this. Why were you created? Mm -hmm. Why were you created? Another way you could put that is why do you exist? And I, I, I personalized it. Why do you why were you created? Because again, this needs to be personal just for you. You need to know this for yourself. It's good that we, we know this, yes. but it's right. more important that you know this. Why were you created? Yeah. And we're going to deal with that on, the, on today's program, because, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons I think this is so important, because in the world that we live in today, uh, there's so much, uh, you could say, identity crisis right. in a sense. Yes. There's, a, there's an identity crisis that mm. people have, that people that you don't even realize maybe you have it, but you, you don't know who you are. People don't know that. I know I've been through that in my life. You have as well, right. honey, been yes. through that the seasons where, mm -hmm. who am I? Yeah. <laughs> Why, Why am, am I here? I, well, yeah, yeah. Yes. Why am I even here? Right. What's right. my purpose? Right. And when, when those basic, but yet so important questions mm -hmm. are not answered, yes. or we don't know the answer to them, what will happen is the enemy, Satan, will come and offer counterfeits yes. and right. try to fill that void. Yeah. Because there's a void in every person's heart. Right. And that void can only be filled with the purpose of God Amen. and 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 what God has for you. Yeah. And, and so we're, we're going to deal with that today. We're going to read from Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And so if you have your Bibles, we'd love for you to turn there. But Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, and it, and it writes this. This is John, the apostle. He's writing in the book Revelation, last book of the Bible. And he has in this that passage that we're reading from, he's having a vision of heavenly worship. Mm -hmm. And his vision, he's actually in heaven and observing uh, the angels worshiping God. He's, he's observing the 24 elders worshiping God, which represent the redeemed of all the ages. And it says here, he writes, and the, two, and the four and 20 elders fell down, fall down before him that's who, that, who sits on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things and for your pleasure they are and were created. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read part of that again, verse 11. You are, they, they say before the throne of God, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things and for your pleasure they are and were created. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're beginning right there because it tells us one thing, first of all, that that God is the creator of all things. He, he, the 24 elders, they say that, you, God, you created all things, and because you've created all things, mm -hmm. you're worthy. You are worthy to receive glory and honor and praise and worship. He's worthy. And, and when, we, when we look at the Bible, one of the things that we see from the very beginning 
of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And you know, you know, today we're reading from the last book of the Bible, <laughs> Revelation, which declares that God is the creator of all things. Right. But we go, when we go to Genesis chapter 1, the first book of the Bible and the first verse of the Bible, mm. it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right. And, you know, that, that's so simple, some, some would say. Well, that's, that's so simple. But you know what? If you don't have that down, it's hard to really have, really receive anything else yes. from the Lord. It's really, it's really difficult. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that, you know, the Bible is, is tells us really God's redemption story. This is an iPad here, but I've got the, the Bible on it. And <laughs> yep, you've got the, the paper paperboard. Bible there. Yes. But whether you got it on your phone, the, your iPad, a computer, or the paper version, yeah. God's Word is God's Word. We, we, we encourage you to have a literal <laughs> translation of God's word and, and all the, you know, paraphrases are fine and all that. That's, that's good. But a literal translation is the best and one that you can understand. But God's word tells us that he created all things. It tells us that he's the only true God. And one of the, one of the, 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 the titles of God, especially in the Old Testament, that he is the only true God, or he is the only wise God. Yes. He's the most high God. Yeah. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> over and over again, God would deal with Israel and let them know, and especially in the, if you read the book of Isaiah, it, God goes into detail, and because Israel as a nation, they, were, they, would, they, would, they had the tendency to worship the gods, plural, of the nations around them, and worship the little idols that of those gods, uh, idols that were made of wood, of stone, of metal. And God would, would address Israel in a way like this. You mean, you're going to worship a God that you carved out of wood? Yeah. And the rest of the wood that you carved out of, you're, you're going to throw it in, in, into the fire and burn it and make a campfire out of it? And you're going to worship that other piece that you made with wood, yeah. and you're going to call that your God? And he would tell Israel, I'm the one that made the wood. Yes. <laughs> I'm the one that created that wood, that created that stone, mm -hmm. that created that metal. And, and hear us today. God is the only true yes. God. Yes, praise God. Yes. And there is none like him. Right. And, and, and we have to have that settled in our heart, that he alone is God. And I, what do I emphasize that? And honey, just yeah. jump in here anyway, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, we emphasize that because in the world that we live in today, it seems like the attitude, the mentality of so many people is that <clears throat> the understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, of who God is, is subjective. Right. You know, it's subjective. Well, there's a God. <clears throat> There may not be a God. Uh, yeah, but there, there's a God, but he, you know, uh, there's a lot of different gods in the world. You know, right. there's, a, there's, there's that God and there's a Buddhist God, there's the Hindu gods, there's the, that, the Christian God. And, you know, they're all the same, some people th say. Right. You know, the, the Bible tells us that they're not all the same. Right. The Bible tells us that there are false gods plural, mm -hmm. but there's one true God. Mm -hmm. And that one true God created you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and get this, you are God's most pri prized creation. When yes. I say you, I'm talking about humankind. Right, right. Humankind. Yes. We are his most prized creation, and it's beautiful uh, that he designed us to be in relationship yes. with him. Uh, and that is... Uh, you know, if you go back to Genesis, as we've, as we've mentioned, uh, we see that, that man, God created Adam and then from Adam, he took a rib and created Eve and, and it, he saw that it was good. Uh, but then relationship was severed when Eve took, partook of the, of the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, and then Adam partook of that same fruit and then relationship was severed with, with, 
God, with their father, with their creator, and they became their own God. Self became their God. And you were mentioning the, the carving of the images right, of wood, yeah. metal, and stone, and how the hands of man made those instruments, made those little gods. And, and the reality is they were ultimately looking to themselves. Yes. They were looking to themselves as God. And as again, you said, there's a vacuum, there's a, a, a vacancy in the heart of every man. And uh, I've, I liked, I've heard it this way, that there's a cross-shaped void yes. in the heart of every Amen. man that we try to fill with other things and other little gods. But ultimately it's, it's we ourselves, it's, it's we ourselves that we look to as a God or we look to Jesus Christ, Amen. the one, the son of the living God, the, the only begotten son, uh, even though we are sons of God, he is the only begotten son of God that gave himself for us. And as you said again, he is the only yes. true God. He is Amen. the only way to the father, the only way. And thank the Lord, he is the way. And you know, in Genesis chapter one and verse 27, honey, you alluded to it, but in that, in that Genesis 1, 27, it uh -huh. says that God created man and woman yeah. in his likeness <laughs> and in his image. And that doesn't mean that we're little gods. That doesn't right. mean that. It, but it does mean that we bear his, his likeness uh, yeah. or his image outwardly and his likeness inwardly. Right. And again, we are created, you are created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. I love that, that verse in Psalm 139. In verse 14. Can you yes. read that, honey? Yeah, sure read will. Uh, it says there, I will praise thee for I am fearfully yes. and wonderfully made. I will praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Powerful. Uh, marvelous are thy works and that my soul knows right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made yes. in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Yeah, man, it's, a, it's a powerful statement. But yeah. that the psalmist David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And Amen. for that reason, I will praise you. Yes. You know, and that and, and so that that lets us know that we as as God's Amen. creation, you know, even in the womb. Yes. And that's what that's what David right. was talking about. Right. In the womb. Right. God knows us. Right. And before your mom and dad ever were, it was, were ever, you were ever on their mind. Mm -hmm. You were on God's mind. Yes. Because God is all knowing. He knew that you would exist. Mm -hmm. Again, he created you. And any, any child that's in the womb right. is not a piece of, you know, uh, fetal matter, you yes. know, substance, right. you know. And that's why we as who believe in the Bible believe and I'm, I'm changing course a little bit, but that's why we believe very strongly based upon God's word that abortion is a sin, right. that it is murder. And it's not a political, people try to make it a political thing or make it a, a governmental thing. And it, it's really not. Right. We, we, as, we as who believe in God's word, we believe it's murder because of what the Bible says yes. that that God in our mother's womb, he knew us and we are created again. Yes. But I want to I want to get to again to, the main point here that we're dealing with today is why were you created? Well, number one, get this. You were created with purpose. Mm -hmm. You were created with a reason for living. So, so God created you. And number one, get this down. You were created with a purpose, a God-given purpose. Amen. So get this. You're, you're, not a, you're, ju you're not just simply a number. You're not a, an accident. You're not some sophisticated animal. All right? You're not that. You're, you're not just uh, someone who, uh, uh, a person who is just living for 70 years or 80 years or however long you live, right. and you're going to die one day and then just rot in the grave, and, that, and then that's over. No, no, that's, that's not who you are. Right. You, your purpose is so much more than just living, you know, exist, existing. Yes. No, no, your, 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 your purpose is, is, is to have a live with a God given yes. purpose full of life. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Jesus said that he came to yes. give us life and life more abundantly. That's not a, yes. that's not a, a survival mindset. That's not a victim mindset. That's not yes. a just barely getting by kind of mindset. That is life and life more abundantly that, that is, is, comes, is birthed out of our relationship yes. with him, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. But all of these things are, are birthed out of our relationship with him, your purpose, your role, your function maybe as a as a father or as a mother as a as a uh, whatever uh, whatever capacity the Lord has has given you to live that is all birthed yeah. out of knowing him and being in relationship with him and you know so many times we people we've we've done it when we say when we say people we're we're talking about we're preaching Us. to ourselves here mm -hmm. people live in that existence mode right. of just living to exist, just existing. They're not really living, they're just existing. Right. We've been there. But get this, God has so much more yes. for you yes. than just existing, right. than just making it through the day, making it through to next month, <clears throat> excuse me, making it through to next year, you know, just survival mode, as right. you said earlier. Right. No, God doesn't have for us to just live in survival yes. mode. Right. He wants us to thrive. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross and rose from the dead so you could live, so you could thrive, so you could be successful and, and, and know your God-given purpose and live mm -hmm. with that God-given purpose. Right. Now, with that right. in mind, again, God, God created you and he created you with a purpose. You're not just existing. He didn't create you to just survive and exist. This is, get this, number two. He created you to glorify him. He created you to glorify him, to praise him, to give him glory. You know, in this passage that we read today in, in uh, Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, it, it states in verse 11, for your pleasure we are and we were created. Yes. That's what they said, the Bible, the, eight, the 24 elders say, yeah. Lord God, for your pleasure, we are and we were created. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that word pleasure, you know, so many thoughts you can get from that word pleasure. Mm -hmm. But one of, the, one of the main ones is that we, for, for God's glory, that's the purpose that we exist, just to praise him. Yeah. That was, that's what's going on in heaven. If you're a child of God, one day you're going to heaven. After that, there's going to be a new heaven, new earth, a new Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you're going to worship him forever and yes. forever and forever. Yes. Praise God. Yes. You know, on this oh. earth, uh, I'm thinking of moment, uh, I'm thinking about some of the church services we have, mm -hmm. a, a lot of them, most of them now, yes. at Covenant Church. Man, right. the presence of God yeah. just fills Praise our God. church, just yes. fills the place as we worship him, because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah. And, Amen. you know, but you put all of those times that you have felt the presence of God, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people say, say oh, well, you know, I don't live by feeling, I live by faith. Yeah. Well, yes, that's true, but God gave us feelings. Yeah. He gave us emotions. We don't use them for the glory of God. Right. But all you put all of those moments of, of, of the presence of God. You know what? They cannot compare to what you and I are going to experience yes. and have yes. when we get to heaven right. and when we get to heaven forever. So you were created right. to glorify God. You know, your lips were not created to say profanity, mm -hmm. perverse jokes, or just vain talk, you know, empty talk that has no purpose to it mm -hmm. at all. Your lips were created to worship God. Your yes, mind amen. was created to have good thought, thoughts that are good, thoughts that are, that are wholesome, thoughts that are pure, yes. thoughts that are edifying, not just to you, strengthening, not just to you, but to other people. Right. God created you for his glory. Now, how do, we, how, do, how do we properly glorify God? And you had mentioned it earlier, honey. Mm -hmm. This is really point number three. Right. We were created to be in relationship with yes, God. Yes, yes. Man, yeah. that's huge. That's huge. That's everything. That's the whole 
purpose, the whole reason that we were created is to be ultimately uh, in relationship with him. And out of being in relationship with him, he, he gets the glory. Uh, even when you're a mess and we're a mess, he still will get the glory. He can take a, a mess and give us a message. And yes. that's what Jesus does. But uh, out of our relationship with him, our personal, intimate relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ, that is where everything else comes from. All our roles uh, that we that we do on a daily basis, and I mentioned fathers and mothers, but husbands and wives, daughters and sons, grandmothers and grandfathers, uh, employees, employers, all of these things, all of those roles and those functions that we have are based on this relationship yeah. right here. If you are, if you're born again, that relationship that we have with the Father through Christ, yeah. all of these other things, all of these other relationships are, are birthed from that. And, uh, and those, uh, at least in part, those things are a part of our purpose in life until he calls yes. us home. If you have breath in your body, there's still a purpose that God has for you Amen. being on this earth. As, as long as you are alive, God has got a purpose yes. for you being here. And uh, we may not know all that that uh, entails, but he does. And he's the best one to talk to you about it. Uh, and he will show you, it's his desire to show you what his design is for your life, what his purpose is uh, for your life. It's not just in the in the doing of tasks. It's it's about relationships yes. with people, though those both are necessary and needful. Uh, and God puts it all together and makes something beautiful. And, you know, you had alluded to it earlier, but when in the Garden of Eden, in, Gen in the book of Genesis, yeah. sin came in. Right. And sin broke that relationship right. Right. between Adam and Eve and God. In Genesis chapter 3, yeah. it tells us that before they sinned, that God used to walk. That he would yes. walk in the garden. I mean, God personally would walk in the Garden yeah. of Eden with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And then sin came in. And that broke that relationship right. with God. It severed it with God. But what God did is that he, and it, the, book, the book of First Peter tells us this, the book of Revelation tells us this, that before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. God had already, he had already solved the sin problem before the foundation of the world. It says that he was, that Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. You see, sin came in and I'm summarizing this, but what God did is he sent his son, Jesus Thank Christ, yes. to die on the cross, to, to pay sin's penalty, to take the penalty of sin Praise upon God. himself without ever sinning himself, yeah. to take the curse of sin upon himself without he himself ever cursing God. Right. Jesus took your sin upon himself. Yes. And he conquered it when he said, it is finished. Praise and then God. three days later, he rose from the dead to prove it. You see, the resurrection was like the receipt that says it is paid. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. It was proof. Praise it's paid. God. The sin debt is paid. Paid in full. Amen. Amen. Paid in full. Yes. And so you were Absolutely. created to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And how does that happen? Just through simple faith acknowledging it's as easy as ABC, acknowledging that you're a sinner, believing in your heart that God, that God sent his son Jesus to die for your sins and he rose from the dead and see to confess with your mouth that Jesus truly is the son of God and he is your savior and you come to him. And so the last point I want to give here is this, that you were created to be a reflection of Jesus in this world. Right. You see, as a child of God, we were, again, we're ultimately, we're created to be in relationship with God. Right. But you see, and, it, and it, again, we were not created just to exist. And get this, as a child of God, you're not just created to just exist now as yeah. a child of God. Right, right. But you, you're created to be a reflection of Jesus in this world. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, Paul wrote this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, Paul wrote, if any man be in Christ, old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. We're a new creation. Amen. 
You're a new creation. And in Christ Jesus, again, as Paul wrote in, in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, you are God's workmanship. He's working on you. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's created us unto good works. And those good works that he's, that he's created us unto is really us being a reflection on the yes. outside of the good work yes. that he's doing on the inside. Amen. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Again, it's, a, it's, a, it's reflecting on the outside and our outlife and our attitude and our actions and our reactions and our responses. And again, right. in our attitude, our spirit, a, a, it's manifesting that in our outer life, what he's doing in our inner life, what he has done in our inner yes. life. Yes. So what has he done in your, in your heart? He's redeemed you. You see, Created under good works is us being a reflection of that fact right there on the outside. Living on the outside, a redeemed life. Living on the outside like that, that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. No, no, no. There, there, you won't be sinlessly perfect. Right. But that, that, right. that doesn't exist. Right. But you know what? We can live right. as a reflection of Jesus. And you've maybe heard this before, that the only Bible that many people will ever read is the Bible that they, that they read in you. You see, you were created for that. You were not created just to go to church. Right. You're, you were not created just to do some religious you know, activity. Yes, right. That's not right. why you were created. Right. You were created with a purpose. Yes. You were created to worship God, to praise God, not just mm-hmm. on Sunday morning some, uh, sometime, but you were uh, tw- 20, I mean, all throughout the week, you were created to live a life mm-hmm. that glorifies God yes. with your mouth and with your life. Yeah. You were created to be in relationship with him and you were created to be in, in a reflection of Jesus in your life. You know, and it's just like that old song, I surrender all, just yeah. surrender yes. it to Jesus. Yes. And then surrender yeah. it to Jesus. Real people serving a real Amen. Savior in relationship with a real Savior. Real people, not as you mentioned, sinlessly perfect, but real, a real person. That is actually yes. what draws people to Christ, yes. seeing that you are a real human being, but serving, and I say serving, but in relationship with a real Savior that loves us with an everlasting yes. love. And as a result of knowing that love, we do surrender all. Amen. We want to surrender all. Praise the Lord. We want, we, we pray that we've, this has been a blessing to you today. We want you to contact us with the information below. We'll send you this free CD yes, and contact us with the information from the TV, TV station that you're watching on. But God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus. Thanks for joining us today on Cross Life. Pastors Bob and Sharon would love to invite you to visit them at Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Service times are Sunday mornings at 1030 and Tuesday evenings at 7. For more information, be sure to visit cornellministries.com. Your gifts of support help make this program possible. Visit cornellministries.com slash online giving to donate today. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on Cross Life with Pastors Bob and Sharon Cornell.